So sure, our last season didn't end exactly the way we wanted to, having to be out there on the pitch watching Forge FC lift the trophy as champions of the Canadian Premier League. However, the point of this save is to win the CONCACAF Champions Cup, and our first chance begins today. <laughs> And welcome back, everybody, to episode number 20 of The American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane. If you have enjoyed the series so far, please make sure you drop a like as we get ready to start season number four of our journey to win the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And we are getting our first opportunity this year. It is January of 2027, and we have been drawn into the preliminary round of the competition against Pumas of Liga Emma Equis. And one of the quirks of the schedule is those matches are going to come almost a full two months before our regular season starts. We are actually on the road against the defending champions in Forge FC before we enter the first round of the Canadian Championship. Atletico Ottawa, Halifax, and Pacific FC in the first BC Derby round out our top five matches. We finish off the season in the beginning of October, taking on York United at home. Making things even all that much trickier is the first match away in Mexico. It takes place nine days after any new players that we do sign in this transfer window may potentially be joining us. So not a lot of time for the team to gel together. We have had a number of outs. Everybody leaving on a free. We say goodbye to Abdu Samake. The 30-year-old just did not fit into our plans anymore. We found we had plenty of depth at center back. And well, especially since we have decided we're going to add to that. More on that in a little bit. Same situation with Christian Campagna. He was actually behind Samake on our depth chart, Samake was getting selected a lot more often when we needed to rotate players in. He was fifth or sixth on our depth chart, so we decided not to renew his contract for another year. 22-year-old Tyler Crawford was the victim of not only a depth situation, but just looking at his statistical output relative to the other left-back options we had, yet he just didn't cut the mustard. Tariq Tahid is a bit of a sad situation because he figured so prominently in our first season, getting valuable U21 minutes as a 17-slash-18-year-old as a left wing primarily. When we changed the system, it really left Tahid no place on the pitch. He could play in that number 10 spot, but he was behind Noah Verhoeven, among others like Isaiah Johnston. So we just decided it was time to let him get a new start. We did have hopes of incorporating Karosh Jamshidi into the side a little bit more last year, but when Alan Didier came on our radar and became available, and we were able to get him for not a ton of money at all, and for the output that he had as our top scorer, Jamshidi became superfluous. Jordan Farrar really no different than Tariq Dahid. He is a winger, can play either on the left or right side, but we're playing a system that does not incorporate any of the positions that he plays, so he wasn't getting any playing time, so he is out the door. And finally, we also parted ways with 19-year-old Bailey Curtis. His unambitious personality and his performances on the pitch when he did get out there just showed that he was definitely not the heir apparent to guys like Elliot Simmons or Isaiah Johnston, so it was time to just say goodbye. We did make one selection in the draft, and we were the only team in the league to do so. We're looking to move on from Callum Irving as our backup goalkeeper, hoping to save a little bit of money there. We had already stripped him of the captaincy. More on that in just a second. So we selected 19-year-old Stuart Murray. He was previously at Sigma FC in League One in Ontario. He is a little bit more eccentric than we like to see, but his reflexes are fantastic. He's got a good aerial reach. He's six foot one, and we think he will do a fantastic job backing up George Marks this year. As far as the captaincy goes, we wanted someone who was going to be on the pitch more often. Now, Rocco Romeo is going to remain our alternate captain. He was probably one of our best overall, most consistent players last year as a center back. But our right wing back, Mo Farsi, is the new captain for the 2027 season. In other roster news, Zorhan Basang, who just joined the team last year, has decided that 
he wants to explore his options when his contract ends at the end of this year, which means we can't re-sign him even if we wanted to. He is one of our top earners at $1,400 per week. By the way, I did switch over the currency to Canadian dollars because I thought that would be more fun for everyone. Uh, So he is one of our top earners. We did kind of poke around the transfer market to see if there were any potential takers for him to see if maybe we could make up his mind for him uh but sadly there are none we don't want to get rid of Bassong. he is a a prolific player on that left hand side scored a goal had five assists last season we hope he only adds on to that as he spends an entire year here at vancouver fc so right now we're just going to let him consider his options but no choices are being made Well, they may not be done deals, but I guess I can show you the players anyway. They're going to be joining us in about two weeks. Uh, The first is Cameron Hobby Bula, the 23-year-old Canadian U21 international, is going to serve as a backup to our number 10. Can also potentially be retrained into the midfield. Marking, tackling are okay, but for this level, not too bad. He was on an amateur contract before. He'll be joining us at the end of the month. And also joining us for some additional help on the back line is going to be 26-year-old Belgian-Moroccan dual national Sami El Anabi. He stands 6'2", 154 pounds. Going to be joining us at the end of the month. Has some quickness, good heading ability. Jumping reach is absolutely fantastic. We need a little bit of help back there. I'm not 100% sold on Jems Gifran for another season. He's 32 years old. He didn't really live up to the expectations that we had, only scoring a couple of goals off of set pieces, and he was probably the number three as far as general overall defensive statistics were on our back line. So El Anabi is going to give us yet another quality option good in the air in front of our goalkeeper. So we pop back onto my favorite screen. The team dynamics, as you'll notice, the club atmosphere has gone in the toilet. That is because Rocco Romeo, who is our alternate captain, well, a bid came in from Halifax Wanderers. They were showing some interest, sniffing around a little bit. We are slightly over our wage budget, so we needed to loosen things up a little bit. So I agreed to the deal. A number of his teammates came and expressed their displeasure in the fact that he was being forced out of the club. It happens all the time. It's football. It is a business. Now, he is unhappy because he no longer feels wanted. However, he has come to terms with Halifax. So we're going to revisit this page in just a second to see how it looks once he's gone. But before we get to that, it is once again time to draw for the preliminary round of the Canadian Championship. This is the competition with which the third of three spots in the CONCACAF Champions Cup is decided and it's going to be a bc derby for us we will be the home team we are taking on pacific fc this is the second game on our schedule once the regular season begins we're going to get to that in a future episode of course i say a future episode because we could potentially beat pumas and move on in the Concacaf champions cup it's going to be a little bit harder though because alan didier well he picked up an injury He pulled some knee ligaments. He's going to be out for one to three weeks. Hopefully we get him back before the Pumas tie is over. Maybe in time for the home leg. And now Mo Farsi is considering his options at the end of his contract. Like Basang, he is contracted through the end of the year. Like Basang, he is making $1,400 per week. We asked his agent what he wanted, and he wants over two grand which would be approximately one eighth of our entire weekly wage budget we may need to replace our right back at some point well it looks like that Callum Irving well he ain't going anywhere not for the next three months at least Stuart Murray dislocated his shoulder and will be out for three months well at least I hadn't sold Irving yet So with Rocco Romeo heading out the door, we are going to check the dynamics in a minute because it is the 31st of January, which means the transfer window is open. We have secured the services of 19-year-old Canadian center back James Palmer. He's coming in on loan from Calvary FC. 
Six foot, 174 pounds, decent in the air. He's got some quickness to it. I love his acceleration uh, specifically. Good decision maker. His positioning is pretty good as well. Could use a little work on his marking ability, perhaps. And his heading is not the greatest. But I like his aggressiveness, his concentration, decision making, decent mentals, decent physicals. He's here for the year, and he's free. I seem to be collecting center backs as an insurance policy. We've also signed 23-year-old Canadian Paul Amadoumi. He did camp a couple of times on the U20 side. Strong guy, six foot one. He could also play in the defensive midfield. Now, I know we don't strictly play defensive midfield, but we could maybe pop him just a little bit ahead and give some time off to Elliot Simmons, Isaiah Johnston, you know, those guys. And will you look at that? Our club atmosphere is back in the green, and we have no unhappy players. It's amazing how that works. Oh, seriously, why can't we have nice things? Mo Farsi has twisted his knee just a week before our away leg at Pumas in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. He'll be out for, well, a week or two. So maybe he will be back. Otherwise, we're going to need to find another option on the right-hand side. It ain't going to be Rocco Romeo. Not that it would have been. Ooh, Noah Abotna could play there. Paris G could play there. He's still on the team. So what this means is, while it is fantastic that we are getting our first taste of continental competition, we are doing so at a slight disadvantage. The good news is Farsi and Didier have both passed fitness tests. Now we're going to have to keep an eye on Mo Farsi. He's going to get the start. Alan Didier will begin the game on the bench because he can only play based on what they said up to 60 minutes. I would rather have him in the home leg healthy than in this leg partially at risk of getting another injury. It is going to be George Marks in goal. We've got a brand new look on our back three as Palmer, Abatna, and El Anabi will team up. The song is going to be on the left wing. It's going to be Mo Farsi on the right. The midfield will be manned by Elliot Simmons and Isaiah Johnston with Noah Verhoeven ahead of them at the number 10. Playing striker today is going to be Yevhen Riazansev and Mohamedou Kane. So we head into our first continental match against Pumas. We are on the road in Mexico. They will be playing a 4 2 Three, one, fairly standard fare. We've got our 5-3-2 that was oh so successful during the last season. It is Pumas against Vancouver FC. And our first action in the CONCACAF Champions Cup is underway. Corner kick sent in. Drop down a button of Verhoeven. Drills it home. And Noah Verhoeven gives Vancouver FC the lead on the road. Three and a half minutes in. His first goal of the year. And the opening shot in this preliminary leg tie. Beautiful job sending in the corner. We couldn't deal with it. In the first place, but Noah Botna tracks it down in the box, lays it back for Verhoven, who just drills it into the top corner. Pumas, though, looking to get one back. A corner kick of their own and a huge save by Marks, but the rebound played in the middle by Doria. Yengar in front of the open net, able to poke it home, and just three and a half minutes later, Pumas able to equalize. It really was a tremendous acrobatic effort for Doria to keep that one in as Pumas looks to move it forward. Sent across for Berrios in the midfield. He's got some space. Lays it to the near side of Aloyas. Will drop it for Rabadi on Gutierrez. Back for Doria. Ahead for Yengar. Looking for Klimovitz. Fed to the left. Velasco shoots it and it gets through George Marks. And just like that, Pumas is up 2-1. We thought that we were... We were king of the world when we took an early 1-0 lead just three and a half minutes in but Pumas is showing us who the superior team and the superior league is as they go ahead 2-1 still only less than 10 minutes played in this match but so far, Pumas have dominated since we opened up the scoring. Busio into the box. Barrios will drop it back. Gutierrez pushing it forward up the right wing. Taking it deep. Gets past his man. Saved by Marks. Kept off of the line by Abotna. But still being bandied about in the zone before George Marks will finally grab that one out of the air. Beautiful play by Noah Abotna. 
in that center defensive position in the middle of that backfield three. Velasco picking it off, and here comes Pumas again. Velasco still dribbling through our lines before dropping it for Mayorga, who will push it ahead up the left wing. Velasco with it once again. Finds Gutierrez in space in the middle. Marks makes another save, unable to clear, but it's going to pop in on Marks, and this time he will just cover it. We've only played over 22 minutes, and a whole ton of highlights going the way of Pumas here. I mean, they are the home team. They are the favorite in this match. Liga MAK sending a ton of teams into this competition. I think they get five or six spots just for them alone. Mo Farsi throwing it in up the far side. Mohamedou Kane's got it. He'll be overtaken, though, by Busio. And here comes Pumas the other way. Doria sending it ahead. Klimovitz. Scott Velasco. Now, we are doing a bit of a better job on the press, showing a little bit more ability to hold our shape as Pumas looks to try to move the ball forward. Mayorga still in control, though. Klimovitz across for Gutierrez. He does have a man in the middle in Yengar, who is going to get it, but he can't break through the line, so he'll drop it back. Played up the right wing side. Valoyas. All we have to do is find a way to force a turnover. Get on the counterattack. Start showing what we are made of as Berrios hits the post on a deflective shot. And Mo Farsi says, let's just get this out of here. We'll give them a corner opportunity. Velasco to take it again, though. I mean, Pumas is just coming and coming and coming. And George Marks, for the most part, yeah, he's given up the two goals. He has stood firm. Already seven shots on target. We've only played just under a half hour of this match. Velasco taking the free kick. That one's going to go well over. Marks doesn't even need to move off of his uh, set position. Another corner coming up. 35 minutes in. Magayor looking to clear it. Ria Zonsev unable to get it. It will get popped behind. And it will be out for a goal kick. So even though they are swarming, we are holding them at bay since, you know, minute number 10 or so. Isaiah Johnston's header came oh so close to finding its way into that top corner. But just sadly, it sails just that little bit high and wide. 15-3 to 3 so far. Your shot's on goal. Mo Farsi can't get it past Busio. The will lay it for Rabadon up for Gutierrez. Once again, Pumas looking for uh, a way into our box. Simmons, great defensive play there, but Gutierrez able to get it back. Barrios moving it to his left. That was a bit of a weak shot. I'm going to say, as we look at the highlight in just a second, I think Marx's vision was obscured because that has to be the only explanation as to why this goal went in. It was more of a pass from the edge of the box Maybe it took a deflection in on the way as I think that was Noah Botna uh, or uh, Noah Verhoeven sliding across trying to make that stop. But as we hit the half, since we scored three and a half minutes in, it has been all Pumas. I'm starting to discover and come to the realization just 45 minutes into our first match that this challenge is going to be a little bit harder than I originally thought because I have a feeling that the Mexican and MLS teams are just that much more superior as far as talent, as far as resources, as any team ever will be in the Canadian Premier League. So even though we got here, and we earned our spot here, and we have a chance to get here again if we have a strong season once more domestically, I think ultimately winning this competition, we're going to have to find a way to get one of those primo jobs in Central America. Not a single highlight in the second half, which meant we made no changes because all I was doing was talking about how we're not going to win the competition. Pumas 3, Vancouver 1. Honestly, for the away leg in our first continental competition, it could have been worse. Oh, somehow I just knew this was coming. Mo Farsi, newly named captain, thinks he's outgrown the club and would like to be placed on the transfer list. Now, I don't want to be tied down to any kind of promise, so we'll tell him that if a team comes in with a reasonable bid, we'll consider it. That makes him happy. What would be a fair number? He thinks 650. 650 would actually make me pretty happy. I'm going to ask him for a million, though. See how it goes. Oh, he doesn't like that. Came up to 700. Let's come down to nine. All right, this is the last one. 
If you are familiar with this aspect of Football Manager, you can do this three times. You can disagree twice. The third time, you either agree to what they say, or if you choose a different number, they will get upset. We don't want them upset. So if somebody comes in for a bit of $725,000 from O'Farsi, he'll leave. Considering the max guideline value for him is $425,000, I think we're going to be okay. So we get set to welcome our Mexican foes into Willoughby Community Park with a pretty big hill to climb. Down 3-1 on aggregate. Can we make up some ground? Now we're going to have to do it without Elliot Simmons. He picked up an injury. He is on the bench and has passed a fitness test, but he's not quite ready to come back. Marks is going to start in goal once again. We are going to make a few changes on the back line. Jem Scraffard is going to come in and man the left side of our back three. Noah Botna is going to stay in the middle. James Palmer is going to move over onto the right side. Basong and Farsi are going to man the wings with Johnston and Mar Matteo Schiavani in the midfield. Verhoeven is going to be at the 10. Alan Didier is back in. He's going to start alongside Mohamedou Kane. The good thing about losing in the first leg is that the team is all pumped up because they are out for revenge, trying to do it in front of their home crowd. Pumas, though, could be just that little bit too strong. We did get on the board first in the last match. Now, Tyler Pasher is also not going to be available for this match. He picked up an injury after the last match. So he is completely unavailable and will not be in the game day squad. Hopefully, though, we are able to get something done as we look to move the ball forward. But Doria is going to intercept, play it for Ruval Kaba. Mo Farsi tries to get in front of him, but Klimovitz still in control. Busio ahead. Guillermo Drugo played in the middle. Yengar clanks it off of the crossbar. And Mo Farsi is able to clear. But Yengar did miss time his run and was deemed to be offside we've played uh, just under 20 minutes only two shots so far in the game they have all gone Pumas's way so they are trying to take advantage of us we are going to go to a little bit more of a cautious mentality hopefully we'll just you know keep our defensive shape just that little bit better although we do need to start scoring some goals so if we don't seem to be doing anything after 45 minutes is up which seems to be what is going to happen then we are just going to have to Lay it all out on the line and go for it in the second half. We did manage three shots. None of them hit the target, however. So we're having the troubles that we had in the past, which is a little bit disconcerting. Seven shots for Pumas. They have not gotten one past George Marks yet. So after 45, we're still tied. Nil-nil. Isaiah Johnston was running on fumes. So Cameron Habibula is going to come in. He's going to take over at the number 10. We're going to move Noah Verhoven back into Johnston's spot. And we're going a little bit more direct. We're going a little bit more attacking. We have upped the mentality. We've taken a couple of shots so far early on in this second half. We even hit the target once, uh, but sadly, not a lot going on. Habibula sending it in. Gems Graffard pops it over to Doe for his first goal of the season to put Vancouver up on the night 1-0 and bring us within one on the tie. It's Vancouver 2, Pumas 3, and a beautiful set-piece delivery by Habibula making his mark in his first appearance for this team. We are coming down to just 15 minutes remaining in the match, however. Alan Didier has given it all that he can. So Ria Zansev is going to come in and take his place. Noah Verhoeven also a little bit tired. Mo Farsi is not really in the right headspace right now. And I think moving him on may be the best thing for us at this point if he's going to continue with this type of mentality. So he's going to come off. Paris G is going to take his place. Noah Abotna will also be uh, replaced by Paul Amadume making his debut as four changes have been made with just 15 minutes left to go. And we don't have a lot that we can do. We're going to go very attacking for the final 10 minutes. And hopefully we can open this game up and tie it up as we look to make additional tactical changes. Uh, we're going to push uh, Basang and G a little bit further forward. We're going to move Verhoeven up as well. Shivani's going to remain back there. So we're going to go to more of a 3-3-2-2. Three, three, two, two. Uh, not something that we've necessarily trained. 
But, well, we're going to give it a go. Hopefully, we can get a highlight. Four minutes added on. And, unfortunately, I don't know if it's going to be enough time. Nope. The full-time whistle has blown. And Vancouver FC is out of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. We did manage to win on the night 1-0. In fact, only holding Pumas to a single shot on goal in the second half. Jem Scraffard with the only tally of the evening. Sadly, it was not enough. And, well... That just gives us more time to focus on the league when the season starts in two months. So obviously some chinks in the armor, none bigger than Mo Farsi. Ever since we made him captain, he has become Captain Malcontent. So not 100% sure if he's still going to be on the squad when we come back for our next episode as we look forward to starting our regular season play against Forge FC as we try to defend our regular season title in the Canadian Premier League. If you liked that, make sure you hit that like button. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate all the support that we have gotten. This has been a hell of a ride so far, and uh, we've gotten our first taste of continental competition. We need to get back, and when we do, we need to do better. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Hit the like button, subscribe, do everything you need to do to support the channel. If I said that already, I apologize. I got myself a little bit off track. I will see you next time. Until then, bye-bye.